Hello everyone. My name is Shira Jackson and today I will be presenting the estimation of the energy movers distance with exclusive jet clustering. So first I'm going to take you through some background of jet physics, followed by the motivation in using the energy movers distance, how the project is set up with jet clustering, and finally the results of my analysis by looking at something called the correlation dimension. So particle physics experiments are conducted by smashing particles together at really high energies and then measuring the various observables of the collision debris. And so large particle colliders like the LHC or Large Hadron Collider lead to the discovery of forces and new fundamental particles like the Higgs boson, which completed the experimental observation of particles within something called the standard model. So my research focuses on the quarks and gluons within the standard model and the strong force interaction between them called quantum chromodynamics or QCD. So one key feature of the QCD is that it gives rise to jets and these jets are produced copiously at the LHC. So we're able to study the dynamics of quarks and gluons. So what is jet physics? Jet physics is the subfield of high energy particle physics, which studies collimated sprays of clusters of objects. And jets are both physical phenomena and an analysis technique. And so we don't actually observe quarks and gluons in nature because they're bound by the strong force. But what we do observe are pions and cans that are hadronized and hit the detector. And so the analysis is based on calorimeter deposits and we use this information of the calorimeter deposits to infer something about the dynamics of quarks and gluons because we cannot analyze them directly. So one analysis strategy we can employ is using this novel metric known as the energy movers distance or EMD. So my collaborators previously defined this EMD which characterizes the distance between two events or two jets. And the EMD quantifies the minimum work required to get the energy distribution in one event to look like the energy distribution in another. And with this notion of distance between jets, we can define a space of jets. And so the goal of my project is to understand the intrinsic dimensionality of these jets and whether or not it's preserved when we recluster them into subjets. And so the way we answer this question is we first import simulated data that's generated by this program, Pythia, and the data is quarks and gluons. And so these guys are already pre-clustered with an algorithm called anti-KT. And we use a different program called FastJet to recluster them into N subjects using an exclusive clustering algorithm called KT. Then we calculate the EMD on all events and we compute something called the correlation dimension. And we wanna know is that dimensionality preserved when we do this exclusive subject clustering. So here are the results that I've computed the correlation dimension on using 10,000 jets and their original information. And we can see that the correlation dimension has this really cool fractal-like structure that depends upon the energy resolution scale. And one key feature of my data results is that we can approximate this jet with eight subjects uh, and still preserve the original correlation dimension behavior. We see that two subjects actually overly simplifies it and anything intermediate between two and eight overly simplifies it, although I'm not showing it here. But we do see that there is a nearly sevenfold speed gain when we do this approximation with nearly no loss of efficacy. And if we try to approximate the EMD with more than eight subjects, we actually get um, the, the original fractal-like structure preserved, so we don't need to use more than eight subjects to approximate the EMD. And so my work will open the door for more efficient use of the EMD for future jet studies. And to conclude, I've presented my work in the field of jet physics, where I've introduced a more computationally efficient manner in which to compute the EMD on uh, subjects. And then in future work, I plan to develop alternative subject finding methods, and I'd like to test them in other EMD contexts and use them um, on real data at the LHC. For any questions, feel free to email me. I'd like to take this time to acknowledge um, my collaborators and my professor, as well as the MSRP program. And thank you all so much for joining me.